At one point in time, I promised myself that I'd never make videos like this. At that time, I was naive enough and young enough to think that they would never have been necessary. But making videos like this seems to be the only way to get any kind of progress with these specific issues. Today we're going to be talking about my cyberstalker, and cyberstalkers in general. I've talked about this person briefly in the My Online Harassment video that I had made quite a ways back, but to recap. This person isn't the first cyberstalker that I've had, but this person has proven themselves to be the most anal. The first piece of advice that you get about cyberstalkers is that the best thing you could do is to just ignore them. This is the same piece of advice that you get when it comes to any online issue. And like this piece of advice, it never works. If you ignore the people making fun of you, they keep making fun of you. If you ignore people doxing you, they keep doxing you, and they start doing things with those docs. If you ignore people harassing you, they up their harassment. And if you ignore a cyberstalker, they go on for way too long and get infinitely more deranged. As I write this, it is currently April 22nd of 2019. On DeviantArt, the first platform that I can tell I've been contacted with, I was first contacted on April 1st, 2018. This obviously wasn't the first message that I've gotten from this person. This person kept contacting me after their account had gotten banned for over a year. On this day, April 22nd, of 2019, I have gotten the most recent message. This person kept trying to contact me for over a year, even after multiple channels have gotten blocked and banned. Who is this person? By name, this is Alicia Rose Pesci, and I'm going to have to go through each and everything that she's messaged me, everything that this person has inundated me with, every single message that I have saved. But before we begin, let me say a few things. This person is deranged, absolutely deranged. She has some kind of mental illness. I normally state, don't contact the people I talk about to avoid their harassment. This time, I don't give a damn about harassment. But I must say, do not contact this person. Because this person has such a fragile mental state that you will be doing this at your own risk. I don't give a damn what you do, but I don't want you to be in any danger. And if you're wondering, no, this person is not a teenager with too much free time. She is older than I am. So, first things first, why don't I just block this person? Well, I blocked Planet Rosa, I blocked I Am Chic 22, I blocked Lilypad555, I blocked Rosa Park 80, I blocked Rosa Rose 252, I blocked Miss Rose Mix, I blocked Rose Pesci's, I blocked Mary Sue 10, I blocked Lover Girl 2266, I blocked Rose Rose 1313, I blocked Beach Girl 1777, uh, and today I blocked Candace Mail 777. And yet she keeps showing up again and again and again. And you have to keep in mind, this is on just one piece of social media, DeviantArt. I have several, and in most of them, I have had very similar experiences. This person is the sole cause to why I don't have a Tumblr blog anymore. You see, this person is so toxic, so annoying, so repulsive, and has contacted me so many times that I had abandoned the platform, determining it to be more trouble than it was worth. Every time I left anonymous questions on, my inbox would be filled with dozens, if not hundreds of messages per day. Every time I didn't, that didn't change much. A new account with the same amount of messages to the point where the platform was unusable for its intended use. I had to delete it. On my DeviantArt platform, I have saved a total of 445 messages. In the course of an entire year, that might not be much. But look at the dates here. All but seven of these came from this year, specifically starting at March 31st. I remind you, it's now April 22nd. That is over 430 messages in the span of less than four weeks, or about 20 messages per day. There is no legitimate reason for anyone to send me 20 unsolicited messages a day. Most of the other ones I send to DeviantArt for them to do something. As I've stated before, for DeviantArt to do anything about harassment, you need to mark your messages as spam. That way the admins or the moderators or whatever will see it. Then they'll do something about it, I guess. But once considered spam, a message cannot be removed and will be automatically deleted in 30 days. Speaking of which, several of these messages are still in my spam folder, which means she has sent me more than 430 messages since March 31st. I stopped marking these messages as spam for a couple of reasons. Number one, I wanted to show the scope of the problem, to see how bad that it really is. Imagine how many more messages had flooded my inboxes before they were deleted in frustration or annoyance. How many more were given to DeviantArt through the spam filter? The other reason I, I stopped doing this is because I realized that DeviantArt can't help me, and it's not really their fault either. What can they do? Get yet another account banned? It's not hard to start a new account on any platform. There are so many throwaway email services out there, especially if it's an account that you aren't going to be using for very long. Well, what about banning her IP address? I've heard this one come up a lot. IP bans are actually less useful than account bans. I mean, I should know, right? I have a VPN that lets me do just that in the blink of an eye. But you can change your IP address for free. All you need to do is unplug your router for a few minutes, and then you're automatically assigned a new IP address. 
quantity is one thing though, but I'm sure you're more interested in the quality. I'm going to show you what I can, and it's at this time you're sure to realize how long the video is. I say what I can because there are some things that I can't show you because that would be doxing, both for me and for her. And I care about keeping this video up and avoiding getting flagged for straddling YouTube guidelines. This person has actually been messaging me for long before April 1st of 2018, at least into February, but it was a time before I realized how bad the situation would have gotten. And after that, I thought I could put it past me by blocking an account or a few. Some other people have been very persistent. I once had to block the same person seven times in the time span of an hour he made new accounts so fast. So it took a while before I started screenshotting. It takes a while before you become that special kind of asshole. Step one in the advice they give you when it comes to a cyberstalker is that you are told to never contact them ever. This is what happens when you don't contact them ever and do nothing else about it. Now, you're going to notice this a lot. She threatens to kill herself all the time. As I've said before, she's not my first cyberstalker. Uh, the last one also did this. And this seems to be a fairly common tactic among at least female cyberstalkers. Male cyberstalkers will harass or threaten power over you. They'll issue death or rape threats or other threats of physical violence. Meanwhile, female cyberstalkers will try to threaten power over you by threatening to harm themselves. Remember this, if someone is so obsessed with you that they can't bear the thought of living without you in their life, the problem is theirs, and under no circumstance is it yours. And truth be told, you are actually the least likely person in the world to actually be able to help with this specific psychological problem, and trying to help with this will make the problem worse. As you see from this message, she understands that I am asexual, but that doesn't stop her from sending me sexually lewd messages, which we will get to. To address this message specifically, I'm not going to die alone. I'm surrounded by people who actually like and respect me, and who give me space, and who do not harass me and to keep my own perspective in mind. Last but not least, this message was posted on a script of mine that had nothing to do with this conversation. And it was posted on my reanimator review, and on one of the model sheets, and on the DeviantArt profile, and a lot of other pieces that I didn't think it pertinent to screenshots. It could have been on only these three, or it could have been on everything I've ever posted. But I will say, it really hurts the sincerity when you copy pasta the same message everywhere. This person was already a problem when they tried donating to my Patreon page. It's not a thing that abusive people do. They try to give you gifts. So here's my first real rule when it comes to dealing with cyberstalkers. My first true piece of advice when it comes to cyberstalking. Actually, the first rule is this. As much as it might be difficult, if a person has shown themselves to be a harasser or controlling or something of that irk, ignore shows of intimidation, which includes both death threats and suicide threats. Say nothing to them, ever. Turn the other cheek, walk away. The second rule, if possible, ignore any and all gifts of any kind. Sometimes that's not possible and we'll get to that. But for gifts that it is possible to refund, do so. That's because of how gifts work psychologically, both on your part and on the cyberstalker's part. Salesmen especially issue small bits of kindness when they want something. This is because when a stranger gives you something, it tends to create a psychological phenomenon where the victim feels that they owe something to this person who has given them a gift or shown them a kindness. Usually the attention to hear their pitch and nothing more outward than that. In worst scenarios, this is a tactic called love bombing. This is something that you may have heard cults do, but individual abusive people can do as well. Give a lot of attention, a lot of affection really quickly to put the victim on edge and want to obtain that specific reward again, and then obfuscate the meaning to get it. On the part of the cyberstalker, it can grant them an entitled feeling if you willingly accept a gift, like they're owed something. That is not a feeling that you want to give a cyberstalker, ever. As such, this person has tried to give me gifts in non-refundable ways. When I did live streams during my growing around Indiegogo, she used the Super Chat system, which I don't know how to refund. She used DeviantArt's premium membership service, which can't be refunded. And she used PayPal's sending money to friends and family, which cannot be refunded either. On DeviantArt, the account that she used to buy the premium core membership for me was called Rose Rosansky. Rosansky, for those who don't know, is my last name. I wouldn't be surprised as it's not a name that I use very often on the internet. When you give someone a core membership on DeviantArt, the name of the person who gave it to you stays there until a core membership has been expired, which you might imagine could be a little bit of a problem. So what do you do when it comes to gifts that you can't rescind? Well, what I did with the $60 that she gave me through PayPal is I bought a White Pages membership and I looked up information on her and her entire family. This is how I know that she is older than I am and I know who her relatives are and she's not some troubled teenager looking for attention and any more money I get from her will go to hiring lawyers. So either way, it's not going to be a problem at some point in the future, I am sure. Also, in one of the messages that I can't show, she has mentioned that she lives on disability and well, I'm sure that Social Security would absolutely love to hear how their money 
money is being used. She directly gave me her phone number in April, which I obviously can't show you. The next message was, I don't want to hurt you. Like a hungry hunter walking up to a rabbit that is ready to kill. And another thing that constantly comes up is the fact that I, quote unquote, never gave her a chance. If you're a sane person, I don't think I need to explain the dynamics of this, but if you're someone like this particular person, if you're a jackass and a harasser, you automatically do not qualify for a chance. But beyond that, no one, and I repeat, no one is owed a quote unquote chance, especially in the realms of romance. It's truly a disgusting thing for a person to think that they're owed a chance. When men do it, we call it nice guy syndrome. Why are you pushing me away? Because I don't want to talk to you. I've never did, and I never will. You have made absolute sure of that. I don't even want to make this video, but you're that much of a fucking thorn to my side, and I've got to remove it before it comes even more infected. Then, of course, the old I know where you live trick. And this doesn't count as doxing, because states do not count as doxing. June is apparently the time that I removed my Tumblr blog. This person, I am Sheik22, pretended to be an unassuming random watcher on my DeviantArt page. Since at least April, I had grown suspicious that someone like this was crawling around, so in a ploy to figure it out, I deleted the Tumblr blog. This person sang like a whistle, asked me what had happened to it, and was the only person to do so. Like the person who had been using it to harass me for months would have done. Then she asked if this had anything to do with my stalker. Here's the thing, I didn't mention that I had a cyber stalker until my talking about my online harassment video. That is the first time that I talked about any stalkers that I've ever had. So this told me two things. Number one, the only way for this person to know that I had a stalker was for them to be the stalker. Secondly, they called themselves a stalker. This person seems to have a solid grasp that what they are doing is in fact stalking. Ignorance is not an excuse for committing a crime, but understanding exactly what you are doing can make the crime a lot worse. Rule number three for dealing with a cyber stalker, and this one is very important, is not to get paranoid. When they start using alternate accounts like this, you begin to wonder if any new person you meet online could be them. It has the potential to make you feel very suspicious of people you shouldn't be. Knowing about this person, and if someone comments on my profile with the name Rose with an account that they made that day, what would you do about that in, if you were in my position? Here's what you do. You remember rule number three. Now all these things are certainly circumstantial evidence, and you should use digression, but becoming paranoid that each and every person getting into your inner circle is a way that cyber stalkers can do damage, even without meaning to. It's ironic. Not only do they do a lot of damage to their victims' lives, once they claim to care about a lot, a lot of it can also be unintentional just by doing what they do. Rule number four is directly related. Do not shut yourself out from communication with others. Talk to friends and family. By making yourself alone, it makes it much easier to be a target. It is what many types of abusers try to do. Of course, she constantly tried to comment on my website until I removed the forum that she was using. At this point, there's no reason that I wish I could be closer to you couldn't sound more threatening. I didn't close the forum for a very long time though, specifically because she was commenting on it. I don't claim to be a genius, but doing this gave me two things. Her IP address, which can be subpoenaed by law enforcement, and it gave her plenty of rope to keep on hanging herself, writing more and more deranged messages. Every message she sent me is evidence, every single piece. And should this ever go to court, every single one of these will be used against her. Rule five for dealing with a cyber stalker. Actually, no, it's not rule five. This is so important that it is rule zero. Screenshot everything. Record as much as possible. As much as you may hate to read the messages and as annoying as it is, it is something that must be done before anything else. Else. On to July. Apparently, she sprained her neck. Half her family is also dead and also poor. And apparently, they all have AIDS. I don't have to say this is guilt tripping, right? Because it's guilt tripping. The earliest messages that I've gotten so far are from February, and this person was already considered a problem back then. We're now on to September seven months later. This was me trying to ignore this person, by the way. For someone who knows that they've been a stalker and that their actions were horrible, they keep on doing the same shit. Hey, it's like a real life. What I'm doing is wrong. I know it's wrong, but I'm gonna do it anyway. In media, it's annoying. In reality, it's somewhere between disgusting and horrifying. It was around that time that I talked about her in my talking about my online harassment video, and it seemed to work for a while. She was quiet for a good long time. Then I started Twitch streaming. On stream, someone brought up that they thought I had a girlfriend, and one thing led to another, and and this person had apparently ran into the cyber stalker. So I give a bit of a chat about this person. That stream is still up somewhere on Twitch. It is the playthrough of Gex 2 about four hours in, and it has been re-uploaded to YouTube if you're truly interested in that. On my challenge accepted channel, the next day I got this message on my website. This person seems to be very surprised that I was the least bit unimpressed with them. It sounded like I wasn't even talking about a person. This is because I have literally Literally no respect for you. You're a person with feelings, and I don't give a shit about your feelings. I've read plenty of the stuff you've posted on DA, and these claims of undying love aren't sweet. They're creepy as fuck. The reason why I didn't question you, why you 
quote unquote loved me is because you're fucking insane. What gives me the right to judge you? Here's a little something I haven't told people. Once upon a time, I was so locked into my own life that I could barely speak to my own family. I had very little prospects for the future. I spent all day, every day, just wasting time. And yes, I was on disability myself, but then, I made something of myself. I started doing these videos. I put myself out there. I worked hard and I got off disability. If you use the time sending messages to me to actually get a job and make something of yourself, you'd have a life. Some people truly can't do work and need to be on disability in order to survive. But disability is a waste on someone who wastes this much time and is this fucking persistent with something. That disability can go to someone who needs it instead of just being sent to harass me. And all this time you're using to stalk me, you could spend it to getting and maintaining a job. Because I'm a telemarketer. You'll be a lot less annoying. Also, apparently I should kill myself and I'll never know real pleasure. And I keep making myself unhappy because I can't loosen up and enjoy something. Keep in mind, she knows that I'm asexual. She has said that before. Hey baby, I know that you're gay, but you need to loosen up and just try something. That's something being me. See how disgusting and awful that sounds? This is the kind of person I've been dealing with for over a year. But seriously, someone sounds bitter. I like to put every instance of love that I've said in this video in quotes because this isn't love. Love is when you care about someone so much that you do anything for them, including leaving them the fuck alone when they asked for it. This is lust. When you want another person so much that you disregard their person for your own selfish ends. And of course, pretty explicit sexual messages. Those end up here and there. She's tried to contact me on YouTube, on Twitch several points at this time, Twitter, and even via email. But DeviantArt is where she contacts me most to this day. Even the titles are starting to sound like typical spam. Let me guess, does the Prince of Nigeria want my credit card number too? You just don't know what you're attracted to. And you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm not a sexual after all, I think you've convinced me. My sexuality is anyone but you! But mostly, she just keeps saying, you never gave me a chance. After saying that I should kill myself. Sometimes in messages, and sometimes everywhere else. And she's been going on for more than a year because apparently I'm playing hard to get. I guess if I got married to someone else, that'd probably be playing hard to get too. I mean, I can't be too hard to get since apparently she knows where I live. Or at least, she thinks she does. These details are pretty accurate though. Or at least they would have been if I haven't moved away from that place years ago. Yeah, you've probably seen some of my docs floating around. At this point, if someone doesn't like you on the internet, your docs will get out. So, for years now, I kept letting people think that where I used to live is where I live now. These docs only came out after I moved, by the way. The people who try and mess with me are, are not very bright, as we've clearly established. Granted, this means that it's only a matter of time before I get really real for real doxed, but I'm doing this as, as a safety measure. Not for me, but for the poor sap who lives there now. If you haven't heard this particular story, when one person wanted to SWAT another, the second person gave out the address of a place that they used to live, and the SWAT team went to that particular house. And in this incident, a completely innocent person was shot dead by the SWAT team. I don't want anything like that to happen to an innocent person. Whether it be the SWAT team, or it be this person showing up at their door. I'm not too worried if anything happens to me specifically, but Alicia Rose Pesci, you should be. You should really hope that nothing bad happens to me. If I get kidnapped, you will be the primary suspect. If I get murdered, you will be the primary suspect. If something happens to any of my relatives or my friends, you will be the primary suspect. If someone breaks into my house even, you will be the primary suspect. If someone just steals something from me, you will be the primary suspect. And you have done this all on your own. And if you're wondering, I have given all of these images to other people, just in case something happens to my computer as well. In the last message we get to read today, she asks, Why do you keep ignoring me and expecting that to work? Has it? No. It hasn't worked. I, I don't know why I ever did expect it to work. So we're going to nip this in the bud. This is stage two. This video. This video it will also be uploaded to BitChute, in case something happens here on YouTube, and everyone has my permission to download this video and mirror it. Stage two is making this video. You don't want me to go up to stage three. This is my ultimatum. I will never love you. At this point, I will never like you. I'm never even gonna stop hating you at this point. Stop contacting me. Get some help, get out of my life, and get your own. If you contact me again in any way whatsoever, we go to stage three. I contact law enforcement, the FBI, and social securities to tell them what you're doing with the government's money, and what you're doing instead of looking for a job. At stage four, I tell your family. I'll be sure to send my condolences of the outbreak of AIDS. If you think that I'm bluffing, and I don't know who they are, try me. Or try that PayPal shit again, and see what else I can put that money towards. This is my ultimatum. Stop contacting me. I will never love you. I will never like you. I will never even tolerate you. At this point, I will never even stop hating you. Get some help. Get out of my life and get your own together. If you contact me in any way whatsoever, we go to stage three. I contact the FBI, I contact law enforcement, 
and I contact Social Security. I'm sure that they'd love to hear what you're doing with the government's money and what you're doing in your time instead of looking for a job. At stage four, I tell your family, leave me the fuck alone.